These two claims for judicial review, the Packham proceedings and the Hillingdon proceedings, are the latest in a series of legal challenges to the HS2 project. Uh, they came before the Court of Appeal on successive days, the 8th and 9th of July 2020. Judgments in both cases are being handed down today. We shall refer to them as the Packham judgment and the Hillingdon judgment. HS2 is a high-speed railway project designed to connect London, Birmingham, Manchester and Leeds with intermediate stations linked to the existing national rail network. Its construction is envisaged in phases under the High Speed Rail London to West Midlands Act 2017, giving the necessary powers for the construction and operation of each phase. The two cases are quite different. The Packham proceedings concern a challenge by the applicant Christopher Packham to the government's decision on the 11th of February 2020 to proceed with HS2. The grounds of challenge involve consideration of the OCAV review report and climate change issues. Mr Packham seeks permission to appeal against the Divisional Court's refusal to grant permission to apply for judicial review. The Hillingdon proceedings concern a challenge to the decision of the Secretary of State for Transport and the Secretary of State for Housing, Communities and Local Government, dated the 4th of March 2019, overturning a decision of the appellant, the London Borough of Hillingdon Council, refusing to grant approval to a request made by HS2 Limited for approval of plans and specifications for proposed works associated with the creation of the Colne Valley Viaduct South Embankment Wetland Habitat Ecological Mitigation. The case raises issues concerning the respective duties and obligations imposed by Parliament upon HS2 Limited and local authorities in relation to the actual implementation of HS2 as it affects localised planning concerns. It involves questions of statutory construction. The Council appeals against Mrs Justice Lang's refusal, dismissal of its claim for judicial review. In neither case is the Court concerned with the merits of the HS2 scheme itself. The Court's task in both cases is simply to rule upon points of law raised. In the Packham proceedings, we have upheld the Divisional Court's decision and refused Mr Packham's application for permission to appeal and the application for permission to apply for judicial review. Mr Packham maintained two grounds of appeal. The first was that the government erred in law by misunderstanding or ignoring local environmental concerns and failing to examine the environmental effects of HS2, as it ought to have done. Ground two. The second was that the government erred in law by failing to take account of the effect of the project on greenhouse gas emissions between now and 2050, in the light of the government's obligations under the Paris Agreement and the Climate Change Act 2008, Ground 3b. Mr Packham also criticised the Divisional Court's finding that the claim had not been brought promptly. The Court accepted Mr Packham's argument that the claim had been brought promptly for the purposes of CPR Rule 5451A. This was a claim for judicial review, not under the Planning Act, but at common law. Accordingly, the relevant time limit was three months, not six weeks. However, the Court rejected both of Mr Packham's substantive grounds of appeal as unarguable. As to the first ground, ground two, we have concluded that it was not properly arguable that in making the decision to proceed with HS2, the government misled itself, or was misled, into thinking that the OCAV review report contained a full assessment of the project's environmental effects. There is no basis, either in the evidence before the court or in reasonable inference, for concluding that the Prime Minister, the Secretary of State, or any other minister, or the Cabinet collectively, made such an error. As to the second ground, Ground 3b, Mr Packham argued that the OCAV review panel and the government failed to assess how the substantial carbon emissions caused by the construction of HS2 in the period before 2050 
would affect the United Kingdom's legal commitments under the Paris Agreement and the Secretary of State's duty to ensure that the United Kingdom's carbon budgets under Section 41B of the Climate Change Act were not exceeded. It was submitted that the Paris Agreement was obviously material to this decision in the same way as it had been to the designation of the ANPS uh, in the Crown on the application of Plan B Earth uh, versus the Secretary of State for Transport, the Heathrow Third Runway Proceedings. Yet the Government had not considered the obligations established by the Paris Agreement and the Climate Change Act and how the construction of HS2 would undermine them. The Court has also rejected this argument. Like the submissions made on Ground 2, it cannot be reconciled with the circumstances and remit of the Okabe Review or with the relevant parts of the Review Report. It is impossible to infer from the report any failure by the panel to have regard to the Government's relevant statutory and policy commitments on climate change. And the Government did not demonstrably commit any such error in making its decision. On this point too, the Court agrees with the Divisional Court. There is nothing to show that the Government either ignored or misunderstood the legal implications of proceeding with HS2 for its obligations relating to climate change, including those arising from the Paris Agreement and under the provisions of the Climate Change Act. In the Hillingdon proceedings, we have allowed the Council's appeal and quashed the decision of the Secretaries of State and have remitted the matter to them for reconsideration in the light of our judgment. The dispute arose from a refusal by the Council to approve HS2 Limited's proposed Colne Valley mitigation works on the basis that HS2 Limited had failed to furnish the Council with adequate information. HS2 Limited argued that it was under no obligation to furnish such information and would itself investigate the potential impact of the development upon any archaeological remains and take all necessary mitigation and modification steps. On this basis, HS2 Limited maintained that the Council was wrong to refuse to grant approval. The Secretaries of State allowed HS2's uh, appeal and granted approval. Mrs Justice Lang upheld the decision of the Secretaries of State. The central legal issue in this case concerns the proper interpretation of Schedule 17 of the Act and the status of guidance documents and material prepared by the Secretary of State for Transport, which form part of the matrix of documents comprising the agreement between the Secretary of State and HS2 Limited as nominated undertaker. The documents at the heart of the issue are the Environmental Minimum Requirements, the EMRs, and the statutory guidance, which were held by Mrs Justice Lang to have elevated the status of the EMRs so as to curtail substantially the powers of local planning authorities under the Act. We have concluded that the duty to perform an assessment of impact and possible mitigation and modification measures under Schedule 17 has been imposed by Parliament squarely and exclusively upon the local planning authority. It cannot be circumvented by the contractor taking it upon it itself the role of conducting some non-statutory investigation uh, into impact. We have also concluded that a local planning authority is under no express, no duty to process a request for approval from HS2 Limited unless it is accompanied by evidence and information adequate and sufficient to enable the authority to perform its statutory duty. We emphasise that the context for our judgement in this case is important. A central tenet of Schedule 17, the statutory guidance and the other relevant guidance, planning materials and memoranda, is that Parliament intended local planning authorities and HS2 Limited to work in an effective and collaborative way that balances important local interests with the broader national interest in the delivery of the HS2 project, to which the Government is committed and which Parliament has approved. The object of this cooperation is to prevent the planning process creating an undue hindrance to achieving that broader national interest 
whilst giving proper weight to local concerns. The court's judgment is consistent with that important aim. The orders in the two cases will accordingly be as follows. In the Packham proceedings, uh, permission to appeal is refused. The appellant is to pay the first respondent's costs of the appeal capped at £10,000, pursuant to the order of the 6th of July 2020, and permission to appeal to the Supreme Court is refused. In the Hillingdon proceedings, uh, the appeal is allowed. The respondent's decision on appeal application reference 73263 uh, app 2017 3838 is quashed and the matter shall be remitted for redetermination. The respondent shall pay the appellant's costs, being the costs in this court and the court below, to be assessed if not agreed, and the respondent's application for permission to appeal to the Supreme Court is refused.